Hey there guys, welcome to Himakaro. I am your host Justin D'Souza. You know what? Our host is actually missing today, so I had to take on the role. But today we have a great show for you. It's all going to be about entrepreneurship and how to start up your business as well as networking. So let me start this show by um, quoting one of my favorite entrepreneurs of all time. This business that he, obviously he's, he's actually dead now, but this company that he started, they own Marvel Studios, they own Star Wars, they have multiple theme parks across the world. Of course, I'm talking about Walt Disney. And he says, all of our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. And courage and um, entrepreneurship and businesses is why I brought this very special guest to you today. So let me introduce my friend, my colleague, Abbas Alvi. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> Justin, what a surprise, you know. Yeah. You took my spot. That's yeah. not fair. <laughs> that's not, eh? But that's okay. It yeah. happens, yeah. right? You know. I mean, some, sometimes you have to introduce your business and, and what you do. I mean, you're, you're here all the time. Nobody knows too much about you, so this is a great opportunity for us to well, talk I'll try. about you. Well, I'm very right? confused. Eh? <laughs> you're confused today. <laughs> all right, so um, let, let me start with a question. So what's your competitive advantage? And tell us a little bit about your education and even, even your journey. Very open-ended question. Yeah, it I mean, is very uh, open-ended. It's, I mean, in this uh, 30 minutes, it's not going to be enough to explain all that well, happened. Well, we'll try, try to... But I try to squeeze as much as possible. Okay. Uh, well, I started uh, my career in 1992. Mm. Um, I remember I used to stand at the rooftop and uh, enjoy watching the planes, mm. you know, because we were close to airport and it was always a noise. So, you know, as a kid, it was my dream, you know, one day I will be working for an airlines mm. and uh, I will see all over the world. You know, at that time, uh, you know, we used to watch films, very fascinated, uh, uh, you know, English films. Uh, I was asking myself, what the time will come when I'll be on Oxford Street, mm. when the time will come when I'll uh, see the Central Station in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. when I'll be in Bangkok, when I'll be this and this. So my life was full of dream at that time. Mm -hmm. So very, I was very ambitious what to do. Then I got a chance, you know, when you're so persistent, when you're so focused. I used to go airport and uh, I got a job in airline industry as a very junior level. I said, it doesn't matter. I started working uh, with one of uh, the handling agency, Shaheen Airport Services in, in Lahore, Pakistan. Mm. Uh, but I had always set my eyes, you know, one day. In 1997, I got a break. I went to Saudi Arabia for temporary two months. And there I prayed, prayed, prayed very hard that God give me a chance. I got a permanent job there. Mm -hmm. And that where I started learning all my skills. And from there, I was started to view the world. You know, then I travel Amsterdam, you know, Paris, and all over. Mm -hmm. You know, my dream came true. So after four years, I said, oh, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, because you're Canada. actually wor you're, you're working for somebody there. Yeah, right? I was working for airlines. And I'm very fortunate that I uh, work with one of the top airlines of the world, mm. Singapore Airlines, mm. where I learned so much, mm. so much. Well, then, uh, long story short, I came to uh, Canada and with my family. And uh, the tragedy is 6 September, I came in 2001. Mm. And 11 September, everything gone because of the terrorist attack in mm. New York, and I got an email, you know, you know, you're going to have to wait, you know. And I said, how can I wait when I have no gas in my tank, you yeah. know, because you're spending your resources and all that. Yeah, you shifted your whole family, right? Right, I mean. right, right. But, you know, I went, I did not give up. Mm. I said, no, I have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. And um, with a lot of encouragement uh, of my family, 
I got into university, I did my marketing, and I did a full-time job, and uh, then I landed uh, in TD Canada Trust for 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I, after 10 years, I realized, you know, I could do something more. So I started looking toward real estate and businesses and developing, mm -hmm. and then go on and on, on and on, and then there was, the time came when there was a problem when the health issue started. Mm. My wife was, she was very confused, very disturbed, whole family, what to do? I said, this is the time we have to think something out of the box. Mm. And we started business and uh, then, you know, it went on and on. And now uh, we see ourselves, when we look back, uh, what we were at that time and what we are now, uh, it's a huge satisfaction. That's good. So why don't you tell me a little bit, um, I mean, I've known you for a while and I've, I've seen you plan, right? You, you plan out something. So before you start, you already see where, where the finishing line is. So what, just just quick, like what's, what's the importance of That's planning? That's my secret, man. <laughs> That's your secret, you can't, can't tell everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, since you ask, so I have to. Oh, yes. I, I think what I know, what I read about the plan, the plan is useless. Really and is. this might surprise you why the plan is useless. Mm. And this uh, was said by David Eisenhower, who was a two-term president of the United States. He was also a five-star chief commanding officer, Allied forces who fought uh, Hitler at that time. Mm -hmm. He said, plan is useless, but planning is indispensable. You know, he said uh, he put so much effort uh, planning the war, the, but not everything go as he planned. It's true. So same is the case with me. Like I mentioned you before, when I came in here, I came for the airline industry, but it didn't work out. So mm -hmm. I had a plan B. I said, no, oh, let's pursue our study, mm -hmm. continue our study, and then try to seek an opportunity, you know, going forward. So he, the planning is, uh, I, I think that when you plan, don't just stick to one thing, you know. Leave some gaps, I mean, leave some options for you to change yeah. down the road. Yeah. Because there is nothing certain. Yeah. You know, if you are planning towards certainty, you are surely going to hit the uncertainty. Yes. And, and, and uncertainty hits you very hard. Yeah, well, most people say the road to success is not a straight line. It goes all over the place. Yeah, if no. you actually see like some of these these bigger successes, and if you look at their, this is where they want to be, but how they got there was all over the place. Well, right? that's that's what is the planning is the process, you know, you enjoy that process, and it's also about what you should do and what you should not do. Mm -hmm. That's the big part because we confronted with a lot of challenges in our business. Mm -hmm. We were about to do some very silly things, mm. but then we realized, no, this, we should not be doing this thing. Mm -hmm. So this is also a part of a planning. You know, planning has a significance uh, in every business, but how you plan, what are your options, how you keep your mind open for different opportunities, and how you bring them in, how you take them off, that is, that is very important. Um, very important, and also mm. the plan itself is nothing unless there is a, a execution. Mm. You know, you have to execute with the with the acute mindfulness yeah. that what you should do, what you should not do. Mm. And we were we were about to do. I remember one terrible mistake, but we didn't do it because we thought about it. You know, mm. we planned it, mm -hmm. and we happy results. Very good. Um, so, I mean, in our, in our business, real, real estate business and any other business, it can be a lonely, um, lonely thing trying to start your own business. Mm -hmm. we're, we say that we're in business by, our, by ourselves, but we're never alone, right? So talk to us a little bit about how relationships are, is a very important part mm, very of Very good question. Very good business. question. I think my whole career, our whole business is based on relationship and and it's just one word but it's not it it is everything in the business because uh, 
we know a lot of people, uh, you know, we know it, how important it is, but we don't know what involves in building relationship. And uh, taking this advantage of this platform, I want to share with you some of the factors, those who are very vital in building relationship. And uh, since I learned those factors, it entirely changed a lot of stuff for me. The first thing is like uh, the value. That's the first factor, mm. how you value your customer. And value is not only just uh, giving them a discount. Mm. No, it could be uh, less waiting time, it could be your approach, it could be your attitude, it could be your follow-up. That's the value, they need it. Mm. You know? And the second thing is expectation. Mm. Anywhere, even regardless, any business, airlines or service or selling product, don't set up a wrong expectation. No, it's the killer. It's the killer of your relationship. It's the killer of your business. When you do not have anything to say, just keep quiet. You know, we, we cannot set a wrong expectation. Third thing is negotiation. Mm -hmm. Negotiation, you're negotiating a contract for a client. You have to put his or her interest first. You know, that is very, very important mm. if you want to repeated customers, if you want to grow your business. The time, the moment they feel that your interest is gone ahead of them, mm -hmm. no business at all. And the fourth and the last thing I know there mm -hmm. is asking for a break, you know, mm. I can see in your eyes. Okay, we'll come back with the fourth factor, just go to the break. Yeah, so yes, thank you very much. Um, we're gonna continue this, it's a very interesting interview, yeah. so we'll be back right after this. Well, welcome back to Himakuro. As always, we're here with Abbas Alvi. He was in the middle of giving us some great knowledge. So you had a, you had a fourth point that you, that you were trying yeah. to get to before the break. Yeah. So but please. Before I go to the fourth point, oh. I like to say that you say Himmat Karo, excellent. <laughs> I, I, I cannot even myself say that Himmat. Can you say that again? Himmat Karo. Himmat Karo, that's the way, that's the way. Okay. <laughs> So the fourth one, the fourth point is trust. I'll repeat all these because up before a break, they might forget value, mm. expectation, negotiation, and trust. Mm. The trust, it takes all of these three. It's yeah. above all, yes. all the, these three because it's very, very important. If you don't trust me, no business, mm. not at all. And if I damage your trust, no business mm. at all. I'm closing my door of my store, of my business, forever. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't end up here. If you, if you damage someone's trust, mm -hmm. you know how many people that person gonna talk about it? Yeah. Not only that person, maybe 50, 100, 200, you don't know. Yeah, it's a slow maybe. poison. Absolutely. It's a, it's a slow poison. Absolutely, we, we tell, we tell. Uh, you know, if, for example, if we see any accident on the road, mm -hmm. we will go to the, maybe in the cafeteria or maybe we're hanging, the, oh, did you see the accident? Mm. You, you remember that, right? Mm -hmm. But if everything is smooth, did you ever tell them nothing happened today? Yeah. Well, yeah, like, if you're, like you said, like you're on the road, there's one guy cuts you off. Yeah. But a thousand people didn't cut you no. off, but yeah. you remember the one guy. Yeah. You don't tell them, oh, nothing happened today. Mm. You will look silly. Yep. You know what he's talking about. Yeah. So exactly the trust is the same thing. Mm. And um, it, it's a huge topic. I mean, I can write a book on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, trust, trust starts right from, from your, even before your first right, meeting. Right, right. right? Even in, the, in, in your relationship, in your personal relationship, mm. in your family relationship, mm. the trust supersede everything. Mm. Without that trust, no. Yeah. Absolutely no. And yeah. that's why it's so... So, so important. What's yeah. your next question? Yes. <laughs> oh, hey, 
I'm interviewing you, sir. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Take it easy. Take okay. it easy. All right. So, so we, we hear about leadership all the time. Mm. Leadership, leadership. But what, really, what is, what is a leader? And what is the process of leadership? Like, how do you become a leader? Well, to me, uh, I think, uh, I mean, people say they are born leaders, uh, you know. I don't believe on that. No way. No, no, no. When you, there is nobody's born leader. Mm. Your environment, your, your, your surrounding makes you a leader or makes you a follower. There is nobody by birth mm. is a leader, right? I think the leader is a person who, who care about others, not only him or herself, mm. uh, who exhort people to achieve their own targets mm. rather than uh, pushing them to follow a certain path. Mm. No, that is not a leader. Yeah. And my, if you say an example, Imran Khan, mm. I'm a fan, he's our prime minister, mm -hmm. but um, I like his ideology, I like uh, the way he conduct himself, you know, the way people follow. I mean, you were surprised to know a few, back, few years back, not even a single uh, position or a seat he had in the, in the parliament. Mm -hmm. People never voted for even himself. Yeah. And that guy has taken over. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he was, he was so consistent, he was so, his leadership skills, he's so knowledgeable, mm -hmm. he knows what's going on in the world. Mm. You know, I mean, I like his reference quoting uh, from this book, from this book, from this book, you know, and uh, he's my ideal. And I think, like I said, the leader is not for himself. No. Leader is for others. And when you are start thinking about others, they start following you. Yeah. You know, and I think in the last uh, program I said something that, uh, you know, if you want people to follow you, uh, you know, uh, you become, only, only people follow you if you're a leader, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and um, they respect you as, a, you know, if they respect you, they respect you as a, I would say as a friend, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I'm forgetting, sorry Bob. That's, that's so okay, many, that's okay. But so really, really there. links back to that big T word that we just said, which is trust. Yeah. If you don't have trust, you can, how can you be a leader? No, if people don't trust no, you. No, no, no. Trust right. is the vital. Yeah. Is the vital. I mean, I always try to bring in an in, in example, even if I'm talking to my clients. Right? Yeah. If I get to explain trust, so I said, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. How do you feel if I mistrust? Yeah. If I don't follow on what I agreed, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, everything will be gone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, as, as we're very short on time, it's a great opportunity to talk about time management. I mean, ah. in, in a competitive environment, whether it's real estate or, or your store, which we haven't talked about mm. yet. Um, how do you manage your time? Because you're very, you're very busy. You have real estate and another, and another business. Like, how are you managing your time in this environment? Well, it is a tough nut to crack. I mean, it's not an easy. But you know what? If you, uh, because my, I would say my working hours or my thinking hours mm -hmm. are a bit longer than others. You know, and uh, I take enough sleep. But you know what, I try to prepare myself for the following, for the next day or for, for the next week. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of figure it out in my mind where I should put more of my time. If my store needs more time, right, so I will try to engage myself in a such a way in other activities that I'm not compromising my time at the store. I mean, I don't run the store, my wife, she does, mm -hmm. but the thing is, I'm an outsider for any shipments, for any billing, for, you know, there are numerous things in the business. Yeah. But at the same time, I, uh, on a real estate part, like I have a showing at four o'clock in Brampton, I always plan ahead, 
you know, and uh, I'm pretty, pretty uh, quick mm -hmm. on making decision. I don't just sit there for two hours and think what I'm going to do in the next. No. Mm. If I have something to do, just do it. Yeah. Just three o'clock, four o'clock, and just finish it off. Yeah. So schedule you know? your time. Right. I mean, I, I think that's, that's the, the way that I learn, you know, don't spend too much time. Mm. You know, if you have certain tasks. Yeah. Just go one, two, three, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, well, we that's hear this it. word success, and people become successful. They'll tell you, like most of the successful people, they, they get up early, they have their day scheduled ahead of time. What, I think what we find in, in our business is not, not enough people are disciplined enough to schedule their time, like, like you're saying, right? And putting priorities on my time. Interesting. If you listen any motivational speech or anything, oh, wake up early, four o'clock, beat the sun and all that. I don't buy that, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but this is the way that I go about it. Mm -hmm. I don't follow that. Mm -hmm. I take enough sleep. I hit bed very late mm -hmm. because from 12 to two, that's the time when I um, go about planning and you know, mm -hmm. uh, reading or you know, what is gonna be my next step. You know, that's my time. Yeah. So I'm not an early person. I enjoy sleeping yeah. because I believe the way that I have uh, programmed myself, if I, you know, but I mean, in, in, in that whole process, there is no lacking part mm -hmm. that I'm missing out the valuable hours. No. no, no, I'm putting my hours in such a way where I know how to drive the maximum out of it. Yeah. I'm not just letting it lose. Oh, I missed my time. You know, in the morning, now it's going to ruin my day. No. No, no, no I'm not going to do that. No. I'm going to take the maximum amount, even afternoon, even night. Yeah. I try to work on my full capacity and to see, you know, I'm not missing out yeah. any, any hour. Yeah. Any. You have certain certain period of time that you're up and you just maximize right. those hours. Right. 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 I right. mean, plus being a realtor, our job is not nine to five. No. Our job is 24-7, even more. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're so dealing with investors depends. overseas and, and things like that. They could yeah. be messaging us at any time of the day. Right, right now I'm also focusing on a, on a networking, mm. um, in which you are also a part of it. I mean, trying to build a network of uh, uh, some kind of enthusiastic people, energetic people, mm -hmm. so that we can sit together and brainstorm yeah. and think about the new stuff. Mm. You know, so this is what we are looking for, and I'm trying to uh, arrange a seminar, me and Justin, where we are gonna be talking to people one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and uh, sharing some ideas, you know, and sharing some experiences, trying to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And if they try to learn from us, you know, you're most welcome. Cool. So there is always something going on mm -hmm. uh, towards something, yeah. you know. So that's the whole plan is. Okay, so I mean, we're, we're, just, we're just about out of time. I had so many more questions for you, but um, is there something that, that you would want to say, just, just some parting, parting thoughts, parting quote um, that we can give to the viewers before we, before we wrap up today? Yeah, I can share with you uh, uh, on the investing, you mm -hmm. know, because I have uh, some pre-constructions. Uh, sitting at my table, some assignments, you know, mm -hmm. and I see a lot of people, they start, they think, you know, and they're not so much, they're not courageous enough to come forward and, you know, make decisions. So I want to share with you a Warren Buffett quote, um, which might help you to think. Um, he said that if you want to invest for a lifetime, you don't have to have a very stratospraphic IQ mm -hmm. or inside information. All you need is a sound intellectual framework for making decisions mm. and your ability to keep your emotions away mm. from eroding that framework. Mm. So you don't, I mean, <laughs> all I mean that you don't need to know everything before becoming an investor or invest in real estate. You know, you, if you want to know anything, there are experts, you can consult with them, you can talk to them, but please move ahead and do something. Yeah. That is the bottom line is. And I think if you take initiative, initiative is a big part. 
I, uh, if I were, if we would not take any share, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be anywhere in our life. So that's my message. So right. do it. Himmat karo, pluck it, pluck up your courage, and uh, keep moving forward. All right. Well, thank you, Abbas, and thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye.